I'm Justin from St. Diablo, and you're watching Brutally Delicious. Welcome to Brutally Delicious. I'm Bruce Moore. Today we've got a great show on store for you. We've got Justin from A Hero or Fake. And if you're ready, Justin, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Bruce. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming by. What do you have in store for us today? Uh, we're going to work on trying to cook you up some nice salmon here. And we're going to uh, pan fry that, take it, throw it in the broiler, and then put melted cheese over it. It's nothing like salmon. Right. It's one of my favorites. I used to be a pescatarian, so fish is my thing. Absolutely. I'm going to take the, also make a homemade sauce using some tomatoes that are fresh out of the garden. Fresh out of my garden. That's right. Garden. Yeah, just back here. We're going to throw these things in the pot, uh, pan and let them cook down a little bit and be almost like a marinara, but no, nah, it's not the same. All right. If you're ready, we can go ahead and get started, and then I'm just probably going to grill you as we're cooking, and we'll... Let's do it, man. Go from there. All right, let's go. First thing, let's see where we're going to start here. I'm not going to do the noodles yet. So, we've got the water boiling. The water boiling and salted. Uh, we'll start with the onion and the garlic. Okay. Yeah. So, while, uh, while you're cutting some onions, you guys are currently right in the middle of a tour, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, we just came from uh, right outside of Baltimore in Townsend, Towson. Maryland. How's that going so far? Pretty well. We had some pretty good shows. Uh, last night was a really cool place. Anybody who's from that area and has not been to, what, what is the venue called over there? It's, uh, like, I don't know, it's a really cool spot. I can't have a horrible one there. But it's, they got like outside <laughs> bars and stuff and they're uh, in multiple areas. The rap room? The record theaters. And they, uh, I don't know, there's a sound system in that place and they're proud of it. How do you guys keep up with the physical demands of the tour? I mean, touring, especially in heat like this and night after night, is there anything special to keep up with it or do you just kind of roll? Lots of water. <laughs> Lots of water and sleep as much as possible when you can. I mean, I'm always sweating. I'm pretty much always dehydrated <laughs> and peeing <and> yellow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. So while you're dicing those up, your, your new record, The Future Again, has been out for a little bit of time here. How do you feel about it now and are you satisfied with the outcome? Yeah, I really am. Um, I, I couldn't be happier. I worked with, with one of my good friends on a lot of these vocal stuff, getting the production. His name's Peter Gwynn, and uh, he spent a lot of time with me. We went through it and made sure everything was really solid where we wanted it to be. Right. And so, like, I, I really knew what we were getting ourselves into when the, the record came out. So, nothing, no, no so big surprises or negativity things. Like, really excited, especially with the end product. We sent it off uh, production. We weren't actually there to have the production done with uh, the final stuff. Right. To We sent it off to Cameron at Shango Studios mm -hmm. and then Joy Sturgis finished us out uh, with the... That's a pretty big name in the business for sure. Absolutely. And that was, I mean, that was our, our whole thing. We wanted it to be a solid thing and right. have some name recognition behind both what we were doing so we could get some more support on it. Did you find that he... Uh I mean, did you actually work in the studio with him? With no, not with Joey. Okay. Just that was you know with the the studio Tom did with Jamie King. Gotcha. Who's, well, that's another pretty big name. Right, and he's he's real local to where we're from, right. and we've worked with him uh, in the past on our other uh, records, and so he's a real familiar guy and it's a really comfortable situation. Do you find he pushes you in uh, in directions you wouldn't have thought of going, or? Well, he he really open to letting us do our thing musically, but he'll cut off if he thinks something sounds bad or doesn't like something, doesn't think something works. I mean, he's straight up, you know, you guys need to change this part of this. This just isn't going with that. And where he, Jamie is the best is making sure you have the solidest takes ever. Like, right. he'll sit there and make you do it over and over again. And so, like... To the point of frustration? Yeah, right, to the point where, like, I don't, I don't hear what, what you're hearing. I can't even hear the difference, but he has a great ear. Like, right. He's down there, like, he has the basement studio, and he's, he's in that thing, I mean, eight, ten hours every single right. day. And, and his track record speaks for itself. Yes, sir. Uh, What's your writing process? Like, you guys all write together? Is it more the efforts of one particular member of the band? Uh, a lot of times it starts off with somebody. We do a lot of computer work on songs. Mm -hmm. And somebody will come up with an idea and like a MIDI file, and then they'll send that out. And then we'll actually get together after it's been tweaked through like sending a process of sending it back and forth. And sometimes we even do send demos back and forth. And let's see. Here we are but the, the idea is a team effort. Right. And, but it starts off someone. But submit an idea, and then it can be never be like an emotional attachment to a piece. You can never say, "I'm not cutting this part because I like it." If it doesn't work, with the song has a better idea. Right. It's got. So it. you have to check your feelings at the door. Yeah, absolutely. It's not. It's not about just what you want or what one person thinks right. is going to be the right. Okay. So what do we got here? We got the onions cut, and now we're about a, what two cloves of garlic? Yeah. Well, what? Yeah, two. We had one real small one, so we're going to do two and a half okay. cloves here. 
and make sure we get uh, get them sliced and then diced. In my book, you can never have enough garlic. I mean, I, that's why I'm not being shy. No, no. <laughs> I, I think smelling like garlic is a beautiful thing. Do you have any, um, I'm watching you cut it, do you have any formal culinary training or is it kind of... This is, I, I watch a lot of cooking shows. <laughs> watch the cooking shows on my mother. And you kind of find out what you like to cook and then go from there. Yeah, I, I use a lot of garlic, I use a lot of onion and everything. Do you have a favorite kind of food you like to cook? Or is it just... Not really, I mean... Stuff of garlic, and actually, I've I've been getting into like uh, a lot of like South American cooking lately. I, I have a Colum, I'm not Colombian, but she's gonna kill me. <laughs> An Ecuadorian girl, <laughs> and she's gonna she she and her mother have really shown me different ways to cook and stuff. Like they use a lot of peanut butter and like right. soups and stuff. And I thought that was like a Thai thing, and never heard of it. it was awesome. But huh. let's get this in the pot and okay. or in the pan and get this going, so we can. And I could probably start that uh, linguine going as well, right? Uh, yeah. Alright, so the pasta's down and we're going to add some olive oil here. Olive oil, yeah, add the olive oil and so we can start our sauce. It's going to take a little bit and we're going to cook down. So get a little, like, basically a teaspoon of olive oil in there. And we're going to go ahead and wrap our... And we're at like a medium high heat, is that where we're at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what we really want to do is get these onions and stuff to cook down a little bit more and everything else first. We get a little bit of... To mix in with the uh, oil, get the garlic all infused in there. We try to get a little bit of brown on it if we can. If not, it'll stay. Alright. Let that go for a little while. Yeah. Um, are there any tracks on the disc that are personal favorites of good stories behind? <laughs> well, your yeah, it is. There's uh I have a knife and it really comes down to being really angry with somebody. Right. And I guess not really wanting to kill them, it might be a little bit extreme, but having extreme feelings of anger and frustration with people's stupidity and their own being wrapped up in themselves and being moronic in the way they view life and the world around them, it can be quite astonishing. <laughs> and so that one was very passionate, heartfelt, with like malice. Whereas a lot of the other ones are more like personal emotions about, you know, I'm upset about one thing or a girl, and that's a, a lot less angry and I know there's a lot of more anger in metal music sure and we're not always that mad <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, how does it make you feel if we're going to talk about the uh, aggression and whatever how does it make you feel when the power and the emotion you envisioned in this video comes to life in front of a crowd on that stage oh that's the best because you can really feel like a catharsis you can really feel the emotions coming out and express wholeheartedly to an audience it's one thing to do it in a private situation it's a whole nother different thing to have someone else watch you and be a part of that you feel like you actually have a chance to convey what you're doing to someone in their eyes into their minds into their heart versus staring at a microphone in a room right. it's a lot it's, that's where the real passion of the music comes from me it's and a big payoff yeah yeah it's not it's, it's not being in the studio it's, it's being live it's being in front of a person and letting them see what it is that you're, you're talking about. That's the whole point is to talk to someone, to tell a story. Right. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So we're going to let that go for a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, of course, sir. When you guys are writing, are you writing with the live setting in mind, or are you writing just the song for the song's sake? Usually writing the song for the song's sake, and trying to keep in mind, like, uh, especially with the heavier parts, that's where we were, like, trying to be real expressive in the, in the live setting. Like, right. So breakdowns, like, everybody has them. Absolutely necessary part for a heavy music at this point in time, but we don't want to just say, okay, we have to put a plug in a breakdown here and just write the same same thing. Right. And that's the type of thing that when I'm uh, live, like I I feel the power, I feel the emotion. I'm gonna use my whole body to express like what I what I was going through with right. me. So. so if you're not writing for the stage, then are you do you find it difficult translating some of the songs into the live setting or no? Not typically. We have there have been instances where like. Things work differently live than you would expect. That, right. they, that you would, are there be more difficult live, and that's the, the thing I come to. Like in in a situation in a studio, you're not moving, you're not running around, you're right. not being as physical. And in a live setting, the combination of like especially for me having to have breath in my vocals right. and also being physically active becomes the challenge of finding the balance. Between right. Is is the only time that happens. But we've always been able to work through it. It's a matter of I mean, practice sure. and doing it. Do you, do you find that some of the songs you thought in the studio were going to be like the big killers live don't yeah. work and then the other way around? Or is uh, that absolutely, not? yeah. Sometimes it's not It's not just the heavy hitting, heavy punches. It's having, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, having the, uh, 
having the, the saw, and this is something that actually learned to me by a very important teacher of mine in the English class, is that you hit with a soft emotion and then you and then something large that create the biggest difference and people feel the difference. It's right. not like I mean, if one thing's here and then here, but if you only come with, like the step, it's the step. Right. It's not the actual size of the thing. It's what you can feel change. All right, so these are getting nice and brown. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Right. All, right. All right, I'm gonna turn this down for a second. The way down, because we got nice brown color. I'm gonna go chop some tomatoes. We right. need to get these things in in the van. Are we good? Still with questioning while you're cutting? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any uh, stories that stand out as being? Know, exceptionally odd or strange from the road. And we're on TV, so we're going to keep it PG, I guess, but... Yeah, uh... If we can do that. Uh, let me... Give me a second here to, to nail down the PG ones. Um, any suggestions back there for PG? The, the rest of the, uh, the band is sitting here in the wings. <laughs> <laughs> we're having trouble with that one. So yeah. We can well, the... There's, so, there's some video, but, like, right when you put on the spot, you know, like, you can't... Think That's fine. We can come back to it. Oh, yeah, we'll come back. We'll have <laughs> that's no problem at all. So we're getting a nice fine dice on these uh, freshly grown tomatoes. What do you think the most important lesson you've learned uh, on, on the stage is? Be humble. <laughs> be humble and be appreciative of everyone who helped you be where you are. Because, I mean, I play all the time with so, so many different bands, and just to, to get to do what I do right. on a daily basis is, is a gift. And it's, it's not something that I'm solely responsible for. There's so many people in my band, there's so many people in labels and management companies and pr right. promoters. That, I mean, local band, I mean, everybody that spreads the word for your band is someone who helps you be where you are and doing what you're doing. And I appreciate that, every person. I appreciate you for having us here no, to give great. us the opportunity awesome. to talk to some more people. This is, I mean, absolutely, absolutely 100% feel grateful for everyone. <laughs> so many people. Right. What would fans be surprised to find on your iPod? I mean, I know you're a heavy music guy, but what would you be the big deep? I mean, I mean, <laughs> Obviously, you're not listening this, to metal all the time. I don't think no, absolutely not. I listen. I would say Queen, but I feel like if you're not listening to Queen and you're into heavy music, you really are missing out on oh, some oh. of the yeah, some of the the greatest music of all time, especially as far as making like rock music or anything. Right. A, a large part of the American psyche, like yeah, there's rock music before that, but what what Freddie Mercury and all those guys did in. Right. That's some of the great stuff. I'm also and Brian listen. May is still one of the, the best guitarists <laughs> around. So exactly. And I I the more awkward stuff that no, not awkward the weird stuff that I listen to. <laughs> well, just you know something DMX. Like expect. I mean, you know, I still listen to, like old DMX with barking in there rrr, 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 and all that stuff, man. Right. I mean, I get into all of that stuff. I used to be uh, into a lot of dance music too. I used to really enjoy taking my time and going out and dancing to like. I mean, you can't, you can't really just do the, the heavy stuff all the time. You got it. You probably need a break from it at some point. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, we're gonna try to transfer this here without try and slide out the way. So, all right. What can I do for you? Just let me slide that. Try to aim the juice, and we'll just Got a nice sizzle going on. Yeah, there we go. All right. So right now we're gonna mix this down in here and start spicing it up so we can get the flavor going. These tomatoes. We're gonna need to cook down. Okay. So let's we can check these. Also check where we're at here. We'll have one of these bad boys. You want to taste test? Yeah. All right. So we need to actually get these off. And I can we, do that. I can go ahead and do that. Okay. Kill that. Make sure that's not too hot. Yeah. And we can let that sit here for a little bit, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I'll be fine. Um, let's see what we can do for it. For a little bit of oil. Right there, that would be nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, keep it going over here. So, if you had not become a musician, what other career path would you have liked to attempt? 
Uh, actually, I, I went to school for economics. I have a degree in economics from Travel Hill. Really? Yeah, so probably something in the financial sector. Of course, right as I graduated from school, it was right market tanks. tanks. Yeah, so, oh yeah, I'm an economics major, and all everybody's, the economy's gone to hell. Uh, no chance for right. me on that one. <laughs> well, it's always I mean, something to fall back on later on. Or? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful I have my education. I think it's an important thing for myself. That was right. a very rewarding experience. I did not enjoy the people I went to school with. <laughs> if you're into all the frat crap, go to Carolina. If you're not, stay the hell away. My son is actually uh, taking him going to NC State. NC State? Yeah, that's where he wants to go. Dude, I have a lot of friends who went there. It's right down the road from where I went to school. It's, I mean, that's a good school. I actually, I have a lot of people, more friends from NC State than I do from Carolina. The school I went right. to. <laughs> All right, so we let that cook down. Yeah, um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna start the others. Yeah, well, let me. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely need salt. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So we're gonna take salt and we're just gonna add like, just spread it over evenly over all of this here to get uh, all the juice out here. It's gonna help bring all the liquid out from the tomato. And we're trying to really cook that off so this becomes more like a sauce or a stew type look and feel to it. Right. A little bit of pepper, always salt, pepper, everything. So we have oregano here to keep it Italian. <laughs> and then this is yeah, this is the ultimate importance right here. It's the uh, the red pepper. I like everything look. just a little bit amped up. It doesn't yeah. have to be yeah, I want punishing, but amped up is nice. No, yeah, it gives a little kick to it. And we'll, let, we'll mix that down all down in there and let it cook all the way in there. That way, the whole thing has just got the flavor throughout it. Okay. All the flavor out of the actual pieces and into the sauce. Gotcha. I've not, uh, I mean, I like salmon, but I've not cooked much salmon because I honestly don't know what to do with it half the time. Uh, so this is going to be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got the skin on this one, so always when you're skin, skin down first. Okay. And then you flip it, and while it's cooking, you can remove that back skin once it's cooked. Don't peel right off of there, and you don't have to worry about it when you're eating your dish or anything else. Okay. So. Is there a story behind the recipe at all? Well, to start off, I went to a fancy restaurant, <laughs> I'll leave the name out, and they do a lot of fish, and they did a salmon with cheese, and I've never heard of fish and cheese. That's what we were talking about earlier, I mean, I'm new to the Havarti thing, totally, I've never even tasted it, so this is going to be experience. Right. We'll give you a slice here in just a minute, man. <laughs> we, uh, I, was, I had a whole like, tray of different cheeses, right. and I was like, I was going to throw some stuff on here, I had fish. It worked out, and so now it's like a go-to recipe. So this isn't something that's been handed down, or something. This is just you creating it. Yeah, I taste. Awesome. I tasted the dish, and right. I had took stuff that I had and put them all together. Put it together, that's, together that's awesome. and it worked out pretty good. So it's, it's one of those things that goes as a key. And, and then sometimes that's the best way to find those things. You just experiment, and then I, then I'm eating something I can't eat anywhere else. Right. And then nobody else is going to cut and be able to cook. Unless they're watching the show. <laughs> ah, you guys are going to steal my dish. Right. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another little spicy bit in here, though. This is fresh from your garden. Yes, they're Kung Pao peppers. A little less than a uh, habanero, a little hotter than a jalapeno. Well, and we're just going to do real thin slices and keep it together. Yeah, yeah those aren't, you can't get too hurt by them, I don't think. Then, uh, I mean, I guess we use them all, but no. Nah. you can't get too hurt by them. That's going to just get yeah. a nice little spice. Yeah, and we're just going to do this last little bit right here. Just doing something fresh. Yeah. Follow me over this way. I'm just gonna go in there. That should be a nice little zip. Yeah. What do you guys have planned after this tour? Well, right now we're looking at something the beginning of December. And then also uh, the, in spring, we're working and hoping that things are gonna come through for a European tour, which is what I'm really excited about. I've actually never been across the lake that way. So. So you guys have done mostly the uh, North America? North America, yeah, we've done the full North America. Well, not full, North, full, full US. Right. And we had an opportunity to go to Mexico and we're advised against it for safety reasons. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately. But we're looking forward to uh, expanding our, our, our range here. So let's go back and revisit while we're still drinking your, uh, your wine there. Let's go back and revisit this story. Got a strange story? Yes. Okay. The appropriate story is we were we were driving, we were on tour of Texas in July and we broke down in the middle of nowhere. I think it's in Ohio, I'm really not sure. Quite country place, like old town, dead town, one of the places where everybody's kinda of moved away from. Right. When we get to a shop, we gotta sleep in the van outside of the mechanic shop because we're dead. We can't move, transmission's gone. And 
do, one dude who works there says, you know, ah, oh, it sucks, you guys are stuck here, nothing to do all day, like, we gotta see if we can find you a transmission, and then we'll have to put it in, and, like, it could be three days, and, like, we be stuck in a mechanic shop for three days, and he's like, I'll take you down to my house, it'll be cool. Well, he got us to his house in an old, beat-up, early 80s Camaro. Redneck out. Just what, like one at a time? Yeah, oh, one at a time, yeah. One at a time, blasting us down through the register. <laughs> he wants to show off and just sweet. Were you worried about uh, a deliverance sort of thing going on? A little bit. I didn't know where we were going. We get there, and then got it. had the chain smoking wife who had a million dollar surgery to save her throat from the place where she worked at, and she said it was asbestos, and I knew. Mean, still, still burning them. I mean, chain, my friend. Yeah. Not, I mean, literally, she, we were there before the day, and she went through, like, three packs of cigarettes. She wasn't burning them through a hole in there. No, no. Well, they got the best of the best, man. They got a million dollars. Right. Through. She had the... The, the whole new yeah. Right. Man, I, and, like, just one of those things, people, you smoke, and then you get a new throat, let it go. Have some comments. <laughs> let it go. It's my advice to you. Pick up game and get something else. <laughs> yeah, find something a little bit different. <laughs> but, we'll see. We're gonna keep cooking here because okay. we need to get this same. That's fine. Get going. We're gonna um, do a little bit of. Just gonna do a little squeeze of lemon in here in the sauce. Okay. Because it's gonna go good with the fish. Actually, yeah. Let's turn this back a bit. That's all. Pretty darn good. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be real good. We're gonna, we're gonna put it on low here. I think we're pretty for how long it's gonna take us to get to the rest of this. Pretty good. Yeah. Alright. We're gonna start actually get ready to do the fish here. Okay. Let's uh get our pan the trade plates with this in the same behind it? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get this heated up. Um and the main reason we have wine here with us is actually more of an excuse <laughs> to have wine to drink. You know, so we could just get a little so just a splash? Yeah, just a splash. And it doesn't matter what kind of white wine we're using, just white wine. Yeah, exactly. Just on the white goes good. I mean, always white with fish. Right. And this will, this this helps keep it like a little saucy and saucy. Yeah. Well, it keeps it, it keeps it from being <laughs> just like chunks of tomato. See, right. If, it, if we didn't put water, it would be all chunk. And this one we got. That works. Yeah. Because gonna we want it to mix in with the noodles. Come down to sink in. It smells great. Let's see. All right. Now, to do this fish, we'll reach back over here and grab the salt. Then we'll, we'll do a little bit of salt. Ahead of time? Yeah, a little bit of salt ahead of time. Just go ahead and get it on the top part of this fish. Now, since we have a skin on it, we can't hit the bottom, but we'll hit it once we peel that back. And that's going to be a delicate procedure. Oh, skinning it? Yeah, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> All right, drop in the oil. Okay, we'll just use the olive oil over what about a medium heat again? Yeah, medium heat. We're gonna let it heat up a little bit. I think we got it in a big pan here, so give it a second. Alright. Have a sip of wine. Kick back. Yeah. This is the, that that's the hard part of these dishes, cutting it all up and getting it simmered down. And after that, it flows. Alright, so now the pan's nice and hot. I'm gonna drop the salmon in. Yeah, so we got it and we're gonna hopefully get a good sear when it's it. Yeah. Here, thank you. Let's see. That is? Uh, that, that, that cooks pretty quick, right? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, thing itself cooks quick, doesn't it? Yeah, and we don't want it to overcook because we're going to want to dry out and it can be okay if it's a little bit right. pink there. So we're going to let that do its thing. All right, so we just got a regular block of Havarti, and we're going to go ahead and slice it up. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. Yeah, you take that slice and tell me what you think about Havarti cheese. That's quite different. Definitely not what I was expecting. Not as strong as that, I would have thought. No, it's, a, it's kind of a mellow. Like, when you want to overpower, we're going on the fish. But from the, when I opened the package, it, it definitely seemed, mellow. yeah, it definitely seemed a lot stronger than it tastes. It's a real soft, like mild, yeah. mild flavor. Very good. 
I can't wait to see how that's going to mix with all the, <laughs> with all the other ingredients here. Have faith. Have faith. Oh, I do. <laughs> I don't doubt you at all. What's the story behind the name, A Hero Effect? <laughs> Started off and we started off a long, long time ago when we first started this band. Like, right. This is the, the first and only band I've ever been a part of, and so we I've gone through every phase of learning about music and industry and performance with this this group. Right. And so that name started off in 2004 by needing a band name for a bunch of kids who had no experience in right. what they were doing, and. I mean, I, I've had idols like like thrice and stuff, and they talked a lot, a lot about ide like ideology and right. how you view your heroes and what it really is a hero and all that stuff. And to me, it was a way of expressing that we see our heroes for more than they ever really are. Right. And it's to try to recognition that everyone is not what they seem. Right. And their heroes are, I mean, they're, 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 they're all people. And, yeah. and, and, and I don't even mean it in a, a derogatory way. That, but our heroes are fake. They're, they're never what we really see, but right. they are as valuable as we see them. Okay. So, what about the title of the record? The future Again. The Future Again is always the future. We're always moving ahead, we're always moving forward. Okay. And every step we take is a new future, a new day, a new, a new place. And okay. the, it's not about being stuck in the past and seeing the light of what's ahead of you. There's so much, I mean, there's so much positivity to be had in this world. And I see a lot of negativity in this metal scene, Absolutely. and a lot, especially with the the kids coming out and people being mean to each other and trying to prove their trust to everybody. Right. If everybody have a little bit more respect for each other and appreciate more, a little more of a community. Yeah. We're, all, we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Oh, I've seen I've seen communities grow and die. In my hometown, we had a great scene in like the early 2000s. A large group of people would go to every show. We had, they'd go to the venue, same venue all the time. Check this fish, but we're gonna keep talking about this 2000, early 2000s. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Oh yeah. See here. Yeah, nice little brown on there. Yeah. So now we've got that crust on there. That's what we want. It's gonna add a lot of flavor to it. But and I, I was telling you about the early scene in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hundreds, literally hundreds of kids would come out regularly. I mean, once a week type deal for all the shows and just for local bands. And whenever a touring band comes through, they all, the, these bands would play, and it was a, always a great thing. It was what I grew up in, and it's a scene that I grew up in love. And at this point, that that's gone. Right. It's it's people wanting to crowd kill and show that they're tough, right. badass, and telling one person that the music they like sucks. Just and they don't they don't care for one band. And right. Stuff. And it's pretty harsh. A pretty harsh community at the moment, and well, I'm trying to spread positivity in life because I've been negative, and I've also grown and seen the light of sure. positivity. It makes me a happier person, a more fulfilled person. I'm, I try to be fairly zen. I'm, right. I'm very, into, I'm very into like Buddhism, not as a religion, but as a way of keeping myself Absolutely. contented. We're gonna flip the broiler on here. I think. Right there. I think that's it. Because we're getting ready to. I think we may have to. So you mentioned a minute ago, you've been at this for since 2004, that's a good eight years, and that's a pretty long time for a lot of bands, I mean, they come yeah. and go. You ever imagine you'd still be doing this? No, not in 2004? No <laughs> way, man. In 2004, I was looking for something fun to do. I was right. looking for something to do with my time after school. I, was, I wanted to hang out with my friends. I liked music. I had no idea that I would ever play any music, and I met our guitarist through school. And he met our other guitarist at school. He wanted to jam, and I came over, started singing, messing around, sucking really bad. Right. <laughs> and but here we are in 2012, and I mean, you're still doing and, it. And, and putting out records. Right. I, I never, I, it started off, I wanted to be in a band. And then it was, I wanted to play a show. And then it was, I wanted to go on tour. Then it was, I wanted, I wanted to have a record. I wanted to have a record deal. And slowly but surely, we managed to make all these things come through, and it was never easy. There's a lot of hard work on behalf of many people in the band. Sure. That none of that stuff's ever been handed out to anybody. And I know lots of kids who say, oh, it's amazing, and I'm trying to do this and do that. Dedicate yourself to it. If it's something you're really passionate about, and it's not just in the moment, you'll make it happen. I mean, it's, it's been a great ride for me. And I think. Is it crazy to look back on it and say, man, look how far I've come? Where I've come from. Absolutely, especially I've never having no other band experience. Like right. this being it, and so 
all my successes and failures have been with this group of guys. This, yeah, with this, and it's kind of astonishing. I don't think I've ever met anyone else who has, you know, been putting out records and touring. Who's the only band they've ever, right. ever done. They've all like had them and their kids and stuff. Sure. And I, mean, I was never 14 in a pop punk band. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's getting nice and brown there. Yeah, I think we're gonna. Right, we're, gonna do this. we're going to bring our cheese. Can I help you with something? You got it. I got it. I'm just gonna grab some slices of cheese. I'm gonna lay them right on top. Just right across the top. Slide it all in there. So, completely covered it with cheese. We're gonna take the whole pan, pop it in here with the coiler. And actually, no, I'm gonna move this. We have a, a towel. Yeah, or that one, right? Well, excuse me. I don't need to look this. That's fine. I just need to. I want to put this up. So we move the rack to the towel. How long are we gonna broil for? Just to get the cheese just, off? Yeah, we're little. I mean, we don't even. We're gonna, don't even really need to close it. We might close it. The idea is to just have the have the heat above the above the cheese. And then you're going to top it off with this? Yeah. With your uh, sauce here? Yep, we're, we're going to throw the noodles. Oh, we got the noodles as well. Yeah, we got more to do here. We're close. I'm just uh, amazed by the aromas in the kitchen. It's pretty, uh, and it's aromas I'm not used to, so that's, <laughs> even, kind of, that's even better. Yeah, that was nice. We have the room temperature cheese, which is always better than the cold cheese. That was just, uh, honestly, <laughs> no, that was honestly by mistake. I was getting it all prepped and that's where it went, so that worked out perfect. That it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be excellent. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Here we go, we're coming along. What three words best describe a hero of faith? Fun, <laughs> fun and all senses of the word, like, we're playing it or not. Oh, I wish I could do a combination of three words. We party too much. Uh, <laughs> And honestly, all right. and being truthful with each other. So when you get home after, uh, if with a little party, when you get home after a month long gig, you're ready to just sleep for a while? Yeah, oh yeah, there have been many a tour where I'll take a day or two and just, I won't do anything, I'll sleep, lay at home. <laughs> being lazy, but. All right, we got our right, cheese. You're grabbing that without a pot holder. Oh, that's good. This thing, we was in there, wasn't in there long enough to do anything. Kill this. All right, let's. You ready to? I'm ready to play. I got plates right here. Okay. Right. We're gonna take the noodles, which we've had a little bit of oil on. We're gonna just set it down. So healthy serving there. In the middle, yeah, nice here in the middle. Come over here. Grab our homemade. Little sauce medley thing here. Put it down. Yeah, that smells fantastic. Down in there, right? <laughs> we need a smell of it. <laughs> and then we'll set this down so I can manhandle this fish and set it just right on top, just like that. And if you are a fan of lemon as I am, you can even do, do the little bit of lemon right over top of the yeah, cheese that's part. Fantastic. And you're good to go. <laughs> Make it at home. Try it. That looks fantastic, man. <laughs> so here we are at my favorite part and the reason I do the show. Uh, we ready? We'll get, get to the shot. We got the whole band here joining us. Let's see what we got here, guys. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much deep, but boy, that's good. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Oh, that spot. And you know what? Oh, uh, when those peppers had a nice zip, just, a, just enough. Right. Not too much. Uh, and I actually didn't think the cheese was going to work well with that salmon, but boy, does that work really well. There you go. Nice when we were just talking about it, though, I thought I was original, and McDonald's has been there for a long time. Well, I guess you could play it. <laughs> fish. The filet of fish holds nothing against this. It's great. Man. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. Good luck on the rest of the tour with the record. Awesome. Hey, and if you guys get a chance to see us live, make it out. Well, Thanks, guys. Time. I appreciate it.